Welcome everyone. So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you an easy and simple way to do um, a to-do list on Google Sheets. So I'll start off the video by explaining how you can access Google Sheets. So um, if you have a Gmail account, um, you can go to the Google uh, search homepage and then click on the top right hand side icon for Google Apps and then scroll down and select the icon for Google Sheets. So once you select this, it directs you to a page that basically has all the different spreadsheets that you have worked on previously. And you also can create a new spreadsheet by clicking on this um, icon. So as you can see here, it opens up a blank spreadsheet that you can start working on. So the first step that we're going to do is basically add a name for our spreadsheet. So I'm just going to say to do list. And then you can also name the tab that you're working um, in. So let's say, for example, we're doing a to do list for this month, which is Feb 2022. Um, the next step would be adding the different columns that you want to have in your to do list. So the ones that I'm going to add are the ones that I typically have in my to do lists, but um, you can, you know, um, modify them based on your needs. So I have the task number. And then I have the task category and then we have the task description and then the, um, you know, the due date for this task. And then the status, is it, you know, started, completed or still in progress? We can also have priority, a column for priority, so you can, you know, prioritize your tasks. And then last but not least, notes. So in case you have any comments, you know, you want to add uh, related to the tasks you have listed. So I'm just going to highlight these cells and then just expand them a bit so that we have more space. And then again, I'll highlight these column headers and then just, you know, apply the color, apply any color just to make it more distinct. Um, bold it and make the font white. So now we have the different kind of columns that we want. I'm going to center a line, the task number, the due date, status and priority. This is, you know, preference, but, um, you know, you can leave it left aligned. Also, what I like to do is usually just delete the remaining columns. So I'm deleting these columns. I highlighted them and then deleted them by clicking, uh, by right clicking the mouse. So it becomes very clean and neat and it ends at the notes column. The next step is let's see how we can populate this. Um, and also add additional features that would make it really easy to update throughout the month um, of Feb. So let's say, for example, you have task number one, category. So let's take the example of you are a university student. You know, you have different tasks related to, for example, coursework related to student clubs let's say you're part of any student clubs or associations um, for example if you have a part-time job or uh, tasks related to your hobbies so as you can see here we have different categories that the tasks might be related to however it can be a bit time consuming to input the category each and every time you're going to add a new row or a new task basically so a good thing would be is to have these different categories um, as a drop down list. So what we're going to do is just delete this and let's learn together how we can add a drop down list in Google Sheets. So you click on the, the first cell in the column, which is right under the header and just click on control shift and the down arrow and it highlights the full column up until the last row. So as you can see here, control shift and the down arrow together to highlight the full row, uh, the full column, sorry. 
and then we go to data so from the menu go to data and then go to data validation and then in the criteria select list of items so as you can see here you can add different items separated by a comma and these will appear as a drop down list so again coursework um what else did we say we said um you know student clubs we said um you know part-time job and we said hobbies again it's very important that you separate them by a comma and then you save what you see here is that there is this uh, downward arrow that uh, appeared and basically when you click on it you will have these different items that you have listed so you can select coursework you can select student clubs you can select part-time job depending on the nature of the task that you will be describing so i'm just going to and we can leave it it's fine um, and then for the task description um, it's basically you're describing the task that you need to be doing so for coursework you know submit the chemistry assignment for example okay um, as you can see here it's it's floating so what I'm going to do is just I'm going to highlight all the cells then go to format and then wrap and then wrap the text as you can see some of the text you know is at the bottom of the cell so it's vertically aligned at the bottom so you can go here to this vertical alignment um, option from the menu and select middle so everything is in the middle again that's a preference and I think it just makes it look uh, more clean in terms of due dates, um, again, you don't want each and every time, you know, to be adding the date manually. It can be a time consuming. So there is an easy way to do it. Again, we're going to select the full column. So click on Control Shift and the down arrow. And again, go to Data, Data Validation. This time from Criteria, select Date and just click Save. So what happens is now if you double click on the cell, the calendar will pop up and you can easily select a date. So for example, 9th of Feb, the due date, or it can be next week, the 16th of Feb. So it becomes really easy to add a date and it adds it every time in a consistent format. Um, so that's, again, an easy way to automate, you know, or not automate, like to make adding the dates much easier. Okay, let's come to the status. So the different status that you might have for a task would be not started. You haven't started doing it yet. In progress, you have started working on the assignment, but you know, you still didn't complete it or you completed it or delayed, which is the due date of the assignment, you know, has passed and you, but you still have to submit it. So it is delayed basically. Again, I think this lends itself well to a to-do list. So we're going to repeat the steps again. What we're going to do is control shift to the down arrow, select the full column, go to data, data validation, list of items, and just add these different options that we have, not started, in progress, completed, and then delayed, okay? And then you save and then you have your drop down list generated now I like to see like I would like this to be a bit more visual and a bit more easier to identify which ones you know have been completed which one have been delayed um, so for example let's say I would like if a task is completed that you know the cell color is green if it's delayed, I would like it to be red. If it's, you know, in progress, I'll just select yellow. If it has not started yet, then it can be gray. So it's really nice, you know, to have these colors to make it really easy for you to understand where you stand in terms of your progress. However, 
it can be time consuming if like for example you select delayed and then you have to you know color it each and every single time so what we will do is delete all of this and just reset the colors and then basically we're going to do something whereby if you select complete it the cell automatically turns green if you select delayed it automatically goes red and so on so we're going to use a feature called conditional formatting which is really simple and straightforward so again you highlight the full column so you click on Control shift and the down arrow and then again Control shift and the down arrow and then you go to this time not data you go to format and then you click on conditional formatting so basically what happens in conditional formatting let's okay let's do it again is let me delete this rule is that you add a set of rules so that you know the the output that you want happens so i'm going to add a rule which is basically is if these cells which are highlighted e2 to e1000 contains okay in progress i want the cell to go yellow okay so done that's the first rule if it's exactly you can pick contains or is exactly you can pick whatever um you know exactly though if it can be a bit restrictive um uh, sorry, I mean text contains, let's say, for example, you have two different items that contain the same word, then it's better to use text is exactly, that would be the better option. So we can use this one. So we have in progress. No, we have done that. So let's do not started. And then we will select the gray color. And then that's another rule. And then text is exactly completed. The default of the color of the cell is green, so that's done. You can also change the text color, or underline it, or bold it. But you know, we're just going to change the the the, the color of the cell. And then you can add another rule, and say it is delayed. And if it is delayed, I would like the cell to go red and then done. And then you can close this window. So let's, you know, test it. So if it's not started, it goes green. That works. If it's in progress, it goes yellow. If it's completed, it goes green. If it's delayed, it goes red. So it's amazing. Uh, let's say, for example, a task was in progress and now it's completed. Once you click completed, it changes the color also. Similarly, if, if you haven't started an assignment and then now you have started it and you want to mark it as in progress, the color as well changes. So, you know, it becomes really easy um, to see the status of the tasks visually using color coding and conditional formatting. In terms of priority, we can have, you know, high, medium, and low. Um, again, you can do a drop down list for this. For the sake of the video, I'm just not going to do it. But again, you can repeat what we have done in, uh, in columns B and E and add a drop down list. And you can also do conditional formatting if you want, uh, similar to what we have done for the status. In terms of notes, you know, you just add anything related to the task. So, for example, uh, submission will, will have to be, you know, via email to the TA which is you know the teaching assistant so I think that was it one last thing also in terms of you know just how I like you know my my to-do list to be is that once you scroll down you no longer see the column headers which is not really nice and I, you know I would like to always see the column header no matter how much I scroll down so there is a very easy and simple way to do that. You select the first column and then go to view and then freeze. And then you basically say up to row one. So what this has basically done is that it froze. So once you scroll down or up the, the column, the first row will always appear because you have freezed this row. 
So again, that's something that I really like uh, to do on my to-do lists. Um, you know, before we end the video, I'll just show you how you can access this to-do list. Let's say you, you know, you closed it. You can easily access it again by going to Google Apps and clicking on Google Sheets. As I said, now you, you can see all the different sheets that you have worked on. You can open it and it will take you there. Also, an alternative way, if you go to your Drive, your G Drive or Google Drive, you will find your to-do list again saved in your drive. Um, I think this brings me to the end of the video. If, the, if you like this um, video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, and yeah, and see you in the next video. Thank you so much.